Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Listen. A billion years in the making. Up to Neverland. What do you know? <laughs> you'll laugh, you'll cry, you'll kiss three bucks goodbye. <laughs> Hey, hey, everyone, and welcome to the first episode of Skywalking Through Neverland, a podcast for active Disney and Star Wars fans. This is Richard. And this is Sarah. Skywalking Through Neverland celebrates Star Wars and Disney fandom. And from time to time, we'll also be talking about excitement surrounding superheroes, Harry Potter, and other franchises with exciting things going on. We're going to focus on conventions, the Star Wars celebrations, the D23 Disney, and maybe from time to time Comic-Con if we can get in. We're going to celebrate cosplaying, fan films, Star Wars Disney collectors, anything that really focuses on the active fan and their fandom. We are a platform to show off you and your fandomness. ness <laughs> And that's a new word, isn't it? Yeah, you'll be hearing that one a lot on this podcast. Do you have a new costume you'll be cosplaying in? Do you have pictures from a convention or even just a fun story? Did you make a fan film? Please contact us if you want to be a part of our show. We will celebrate anyone and anything. It doesn't matter how big or small, we want to hear about it. And since we live in Long Beach, California, we are literally 20 minutes away, that's 20 minutes surface streets, away from Disneyland. So we'll be reporting a lot about what's going on out there at Disneyland and Disney California Adventure new merchandise, the special events, ride openings, and annual pass holder info. And since Disney is just down the street from us, we can keep you up to date on what's going on with new Star Wars attractions and rides. Not that we've officially heard what's going on, but we've heard some whispers, as Padme would say. On our first show, we'll be telling you about Halloween time at Disneyland, which actually started Friday the 13th of September, and it goes until October 31st. And we'll be telling you all about all the long lines yes. for everything. Oof, it was so crowded. I don't think I've seen Disney that full since the opening of Star Tours 2. <laughs> no. It, it was nuts. It was. But we also have a regular segment called Tiki Cantina, where me and a bunch of my fangirl friends will talk about fandom from our fangirl perspective. I told you there's a lot of fandom in here. Mm -hmm. And, oh, we'll also be talking about Thor. Wait, what? Oh, just shoes, sweetie. We also have our vintage video segment where I get to put to use all the video clips I've been amassing since I first owned a VCR in 1984. Four, four, four. This is when I used to sit with my finger just poised over the record button, just waiting for anything of Star Wars to come on so I can record it. That's so cute. Sarah and I have so much to share with the listeners of Skywalking Through Neverland, including our meeting with Star Wars Episode Seven director, J.J. Abrams. Uh, sweetie? Shh, hold on. Uh, this was held at the Hollywood Bowl right before the John Williams Honey. concert. I'm in the middle of something. Now, J.J. was extremely gracious enough to meet with us. and <laughs> Really? He was very gracious. Well, he was very gracious, but I would hardly call that a meeting. Shh, it, was, it was a meeting. It was a meeting, okay? Okay. All right. All right. In my head, it was a meeting. All right. Maybe it wasn't so much a meeting as it was a pre-planned run-in with J.J. Abrams. Now you're talking. Yeah. But we spotted him in his box seats with his family, and then when he got up to go to the concession stand, well, we stalked, uh, followed him. <laughs> That's right. You you came running over to me and said, "Come now, come now," and so I rushed out of my seats. Yeah. I I yelled from across the Hollywood Bowl, "Sarah, there he is!" <laughs> <laughs> this was right before the concert started. Yeah, so we waited for him outside of the concession stand, and as he walked out with his arm full of beverages and snacks for his family, Sarah went over and graciously said, Can you please take a picture with us? And he turned around and said, Okay, sure. I, I, he was so nice. He was very, very nice. I, I wasn't expecting him to say yes. I expected him to say, uh, I'm with my family. I, I really can't, and I would have been fine with that. But yeah. he turned around and smiled, and I took a selfie of the three of us at the John Williams concert. Yeah, and I was surprised no one else really came up to him. Yeah, people walked by and kind of did a double take. Like, we, we know that guy from somewhere. But he he was wearing his baseball cap, his, his casual clothes. Yeah, and what's odd about the Hollywood Bowl and him getting concessions is that when you're in box seats, usually they have runners to do that for you. Yeah, but not him. Nope. No. It's I guess he wanted to feel like a normal guy. 
This man does things himself. This man gets things done. <laughs> and then uh, we thanked him for bringing back John Williams. And then I said to him, thank you very much for shooting the next film on, on actual film. And he turned to me and said, it's very important. Yes, he did. And that concluded our meeting, our 34-second meeting. <laughs> just, I'll just, let you call it a meeting call it a this meeting. time. <laughs> All right. Not, it wasn't stalking. It was a meeting. Now, as everyone knows, Star Wars Episode Seven is coming out in the year 2015. That sounds really weird. Yeah. But there are so many other films coming out that same year. Major, major blockbuster franchises. I am so excited. Yeah. These are back-to-back-to-back-to-back movies. So this is the year that every fanboy and every fangirl have been waiting for. Are you ready for this rollout? On March the 6th, Fantastic Four Reborn. Hmm. Or should it be Fantastic Four Reboot? They're going to reboot the whole thing. Just Let's just start from the very, very beginning. So now, oddly enough, even though this is a Marvel property, it's going to be released by Fox, not Disney. How did that happen? Fox still has the rights to it. And as long as they keep on making movies... They're going to have the rights to it. There's no way they're going to give this to Disney. No, nope, that's that's why they're rebooting. Yeah, and this is going to be set in the same universe as the X-Men movies. Ooh, does that mean Wolverine's making an appearance? Oh, I, you know what? I don't know. I don't think anyone knows. But we do know that eventually there's going to be a crossover movie with Fantastic Four meets the X-Men. Ah. That is going to be very exciting. And then on March the 13th, we have a live-action Cinderella. Yay! I, I love all these live-action movies that Disney's doing. And who's going to be Cinderella this time? It's actually going to be Lily James. And if you don't know who that is, uh, she is Lady Rose McClare from Downton Abbey. That's Downtown Abbey. No, Downton. Down, downtown Speaking Abbey. Speaking from someone who actually watches the series, <laughs> Downton Abbey. Okay, we'll fix that in editing. Downtown. <laughs> this is going to be directed by Kenneth Thor Brana. <laughs> Yeah, Kenneth Branagh is really, really doing well in the directing field. I mean, he's directed so many fil great films in the past, but now with Thor and Cinderella, and being a great British actor, I think he's the right director for Cinderella. I'm sure he'll give it a Shakespearean feel. And then on May the 1st, what day is that? That's the, the day that we're going to take off of everything, because that is the release of... Avengers 2, Age of Ultron. Avengers 2. Oh. Oh, I'm just going to line up at the theater right now. I think I'm so. I'm so looking forward to this. Now, <laughs> now James Spader is going to be the voice of Ultron. James Spader? James Spader, yes. I know you're thinking, wait a minute, Blaine? Blaine from Pretty in Pink? Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Is going to be the, be the major bad guy in Avengers 2? He's going to have the same hair, too. <laughs> I'd love to see that. Yeah. And I'm so happy that Joss Whedon is coming back to direct this one. Well, I don't know about you, but I'll be taking off that whole week. Now, I almost want to say that May the 25th, that weekend, we're going to see Star Wars Episode 7. However, mm -hmm. <laughs> at Disney Expo, Bob Iger announced yes. that it, Star Wars Episode 7 will definitely be coming out in the summer of 2015. But then a day later, it was rumored that it's now coming out in December. I just can't see a Star no, Wars movie in December. It's not a winter movie. No. It's a summer movie. Yes. If anything, move Avengers to the winter time and give Star Wars back its summer. We need to keep with tradition here. Right, we need to start a campaign. This cannot happen. And then on June the 12th, Jurassic Park 4, which now has a new name, Jurassic World is going to be coming out. Now, is that a reboot? I think it's more of a continuation. No cast list has been revealed yet, so it's hard to say if Jeff Goldblum or Sam Neill will be in it. But this one is going to be directed by Colin Trevorrow. Trevorrow? Trevorrow. <laughs> by that guy. And it's going to be executive produced by Spielberg, so I'm sure it'll have some of that Spielbergian feel to it. Well, at least he's involved, because I think Jurassic Park without Spielberg, it just wouldn't work for me. No, then it's just Godzilla. So what else is happening in June? Well, on June 19th, Assassin's Creed. Now, Sarah, tell everyone everything you know about Assassin's Creed. That would be nothing. Yeah, we're not, we're not gamers. We're not going to try to fool anybody. We do know that it's, it stars Michael Fassbender. However, yeah. And why not? He, he's in everything else. And what else is he in? it's going to be in color. In color? <laughs> yep. Starring, it's going to star Michael Fassbender, and it's going to be in color. But it's pretty popular, so I'm sure that'll be a popular movie. Oh, I'm sure it will be. 
And then we're going to jump ahead to July the 1st with Terminator 5. Or, right now, they're just calling it Terminator. This one here, I believe it's going to be a prequel to the original Terminator. Now, this was originally slated for June the 26th, but I think they wanted to take advantage of the July 4th weekend. Makes sense to me. And for that July 4th weekend, Arnold is going to get a run for his money with Independence Day 2, or ID Forever Part 1. Part 1. Now, you know what? I think they called it that title so that people could tweet about it. Well, yeah, but Part 1? Come on. Okay. I'm sure they can condense this into one movie. Now, this one here is either going to star Will Smith or Jaden Smith. Either way, I'm sure one of those Smith kids is going to be in this film. Or even Willow Smith. I'm sure Willow Smith will even do a song for this. <laughs> uh, I'm sure Daddy Smith is going to get his kids all over this film. All right, so what else is happening in and July? And then on July 15th, we have Marvel's Ant-Man. Now, this is funny because this was moved up from November. Why was it moved up? Because Disney wanted Ant-Man to rival Man of Steel 2, Batman vs. Superman. So that weekend, you're going to have Ant-Man versus Batman versus Superman. Now, wait a minute. Man of Steel 2 is coming out now, July 17th. Yeah, Man of Steel 2 is going to be coming out the 17th of July, but Ant-Man's coming out July 15th. Now, I'm sure Warner Brothers is just seething over this decision because they thought we're going to reign supreme over July, and then, and then Disney said, nope, we're going to do everything we can to take a big bite out of your box office. Ooh. And I, I think it will. Now, judging the way that Marvel's films have been going and the DC films have been going, I think Ant-Man is going to give Superman 2 a run for his money. I'm sorry, Man of Steel 2 a run for his money. <laughs> but then again, people will all be coming to see Man of Steel 2 because they're going to want to see how Ben Affleck does as, as Batman. I would, I'm interested to see that. You know, I'm more interested to see how he's going to do as Bruce Wayne than as Batman. So I'm, I'm just not getting him as the sullen billionaire with a dark side. Now, you can you can put almost anyone in the Batman costume because the costume does all the work. That's true. But to see him as Bruce Wayne... But you know what? Then again, no one saw Michael Keaton as Batman, and he did fantastically well. He did? He did, he did really, really well. So, I know, speaking for myself, I'm going to hold out hope for Ben. Go, Ben. All right. Trivia challenge. What film series has had the most feature-length sequels? Sarah? I believe that would be James Bond. James Bond is correct. On November 6th, Daniel Craig returns for Bond 24. Now, in this film, James Bond is going to battle MGM for the rights to the series. <laughs> they've been battling over those rights for years and years and years. So, in this one, James Bond battles studio executives. Then on November 20th, we have Hunger Games Mockingjay Part 2. Now, you've read the books. Should Mockingjay be split up into two different parts? Well, it is the final book of the three-part series, so to follow oh, along... Oh, so this game's like a Twilight thing. Exactly, to follow along with all the other series. I mean, I don't Harry know about Potter, Twilight things. Harry Potter and Twilight, then uh, splitting the last book into two parts makes more money for them. Well, okay, money thing. Okay, I got it. And then on November 27th, we have The Good Dinosaur. Now, this was just moved back from the summer of 2014. That's a Pixar film, correct? It is okay. a Pixar film. And this now leaves 2014 Pixar-less. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Right now, the stockholders are not happy with this decision. What are those little kids going to do? Little kids? Nothing. We're talking about stockholders. Oh. Excuse me. <laughs> yeah. But this is going to take the place of Finding Dory, the Finding Nemo sequel that was going to be released this weekend of 2015. But now they've pushed Finding Dory back to June 17, 2016. Hmm. Okay. You know, I, I gotta give them credit. If they didn't feel like the films were ready enough, then push them back. We, we'll wait. We, wait. we waited this long. I think the only one who can't wait is Ellen DeGeneres. And we almost had one more major franchise with Pirates of the Caribbean 5. But that was put on hold until everyone forgets about the Lone Ranger. The very poor box office of the Lone Ranger just killed the deal between Disney and Bruckheimer, who they've had 27 films in their past. Now wow. all it took was one flop, and now the deal has gone the same way as the Lone Ranger, a distant memory. So we look forward to 2015. Can't wait. Prepare to make the jump to light speed. Yeah. 
Light Speed to Main Street. It's our segment where we talk about what's going on at the Disney parks in Anaheim, as well as other Disneyland events around LA. And right now, it's our favorite time of year at the parks. It's Halloween time. Woohoo! How much do we love that? I love it a lot. I know, and it started on Friday the 13th. What an appropriate day where Disneyland was open until the 13th hour. Of course, we had to make a special trip to go. Well, we learned our lesson. <laughs> yeah, when Disneyland has a special event like Halloween time and it's on Friday the 13th, you can expect a huge crowd. Yes, we heard This horror. was like Comic-Con crowd. It was mm -hmm. so it was so tightly packed. We actually got there around what, 6, I think. And but they're at about 7 o'clock, because that's when we started waiting in line for the Mickey's dance party. Oh, okay, okay. But luckily, we had parked a little earlier than that, because I heard horror stories of trying people trying to park about a couple hours later. Yeah, my friend Dave tried to get there a few hours after we did, and after 45 minutes to 60 minutes waiting to park, he said, never mind, I'm going home. Yep, he didn't even make it in. Yeah, but still, it, it was fun. It was fun. I had a, a good time with it. It's Halloween time at Disney. How, how can you go wrong with that? That's true. And they had these interesting dance parties set up where... And this was new. This has never been done before. Yeah. Today. Yeah, they basically took over the train stations at Disneyland, New Orleans Square and Main Street train stations. Well, they had their, a big dance floor with a lot of dancers getting the crowd going, a, a really fun DJ. And they also had another dance floor at New Orleans. New Orleans Square. With the villains. They had, uh, they had Hades. Yes. They had... They had Frodo. They had Frodo, not the Lord of the Rings guy. No. This is the one from Hunchback of Notre Dame. They had the Queen from Snow White. Evil Queen. Evil they Queen. They had Maleficent. Maleficent. <laughs> Maleficent. Male Maleficent. You're going to have to learn that by next year. <laughs> when the movie comes out. I, I still cannot say that. <laughs> they also had uh, Captain Hook. Yes. Oh, and they had Lady Tremaine and her two stepsisters. Oh, that's right. They were cute. They, they were very cute. Although Hades, I think, stole the show. Yeah, he was getting the crowd going. Yes, yeah. and the dance floor was extremely crowded. And watch out if you got too close to someone who was dancing a little too long. Yeah, they were kind of uh, a little sweaty there. Yeah. But that's just the kind of thing you got to expect when you go to Disneyland mm -hmm. at Halloween and a lot of dancing. Yeah. And from there, we went to go wait in line for pumpkin fritters. That's right. This was the big, big draw for me. Only they kept selling out every 20 minutes. Yep. So we were waiting in line at Royal Street Veranda. Luckily, we chose to wait in line while Fantasmic was going on, which actually worked out well for us since we waited in line about 40 minutes. We made it to the front of the line right when they got a new batch of pumpkin fritters in, and we were very happy. Of course, the Haunted Mansion was that was the, the biggest draw of the night. Yeah, I think the line was 80 minutes. Yeah, um, and this was at midnight, and it was hour and a half long. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We didn't wait in that one. No, since we, we live down the street, like, okay, we'll come on a, on a Tuesday morning when yeah. the wait is 15 minutes. Exactly. We did get on Pirates of the Caribbean pretty quick, though. That yeah. That was, uh, that was I, a surprise. They have some really fun things, like on Main Street during the day, they actually have some fun shows with, I think, Mrs. Pumpkin. Those little it's, impromptu shows that just pop up. Yeah, it's really fun. Oh, uh, actually, they did have these really fun ear hats or headbands for Halloween time. And now I don't know if they were an exclusive for that night because we didn't, we weren't able to get any. But they had like Maleficent headbands. They had some really cool skeleton-like headbands. And we saw people wearing them all over the parks that day and made me really want one. Yeah, they had a lot of new merchandise. Mm -hmm. Not just for Halloween, but they also had some, some new Star Wars merchandise. They had new shirts. Yeah, they had a, a, a Battle oh. Damage Stormtrooper shirt, which I thought looked really cool. Yeah, it was uh, like the the metal, the shirt the, was actually replicating the chest piece. As if he'd been shot in the chest. Yes. Yeah, very, very nice. And even the back, it was like the back of the chest piece. Yeah. In terms of new Star Wars merchandise at Disneyland, I think they get a new t-shirt every, every other week. So Mickey's Halloween time is going to be going on until Halloween night, October 31st. It's a definite must-see. They really deck the halls out with Halloween decorations all around Main Street. They have Woody's Roundup area. It's got some nice Halloween shows and some... Some crafts for kids. Some crafts. The first time we went to Disneyland together as a couple was mm -hmm. at Halloween time. Yes. It was like a whole, whole new experience. Yeah, so it's a definite must-see if you're out in this area. Have you been to the parks recently? Is there something you want to share that we missed? Or just any fun anecdote from your latest trip? 
Yeah, once again, this is a podcast to celebrate fandom. So if you have some pictures you want to share, if you have some video of something fun you did at Disneyland at Halloween time or any time, please share it. We're, we're here as one big fandom community. Email us. Share at skywalkingthroughneverland.com. We look forward to hearing and seeing your stories. Be our guest, be our guest, put our service to the test. Tie your neck and mind your neck, and we'll provide the rest. So be sure, hot or dirt. Now on to Mouse Droid Mixer. Mouse Droid Mixer is where we spotlight a listener and their creativity as a fan, whether it's in cosplaying, making a fan film, or participating in a special fan event. Since this is our first podcast, we're going to spotlight ourselves so you can get to know us just a little bit better. Yeah, and, and know who's talking at you from this other side of the mic. First up will be Sarah interviewing me. So, Richard. Yes, Sarah. How long have you been a Star Wars fan? Uh, well, <laughs> I've been a Star Wars fan since the very, very beginning, the summer of 1977 where I was pretty much the last one in the whole school to be a Star Wars fan. Because my big thing back then was King Kong. Remember that one? Not the Peter Jackson film, but the 1976 King Kong with, with Rick Baker in the costume. I don't remember that one. Uh, you weren't even born yet. But I was, and that, t that to me was the biggest film of all time. There's no way you could get better than King Kong. And several of my friends kept asking, if you like King Kong, you're going to love Star Wars. I said, nope, not for me. And little by little, in 1977, especially in the summertime, there was just no way to escape Star Wars, and it pretty much consumed me and has taken hold of me until this present moment. <laughs> Even in the dark times, I was still a big Star Wars fan. Dark times being about dark... 1990 through... Uh, we're, no, no, we're going to... No, before that. 1987 through 1991. Mm. Not good times. Not good times to be a fan. Oh, that's when I got into it. Oddly enough, yeah. <laughs> Oddly enough, they, you came in at the right time because it had slowed down or even stopped, and then it gave you a chance to catch back up exactly. with everything. Exactly. So good, good timing on your part. <laughs> How severe is your fandom? Oh boy, my fandom is extremely severe. Some call it obsessive, and it really started well back in '77, having to see the movies again and again and again and again and again. And then we did something called dressing up as the character, or as you kids call it, cosplaying. <laughs> and the, the very first time I ever dressed up as the character was when me and my friend Danny Hurley put on a, a Darth Vader costume, and he was Yoda. We went all around the neighborhood telling everyone about the re-release of The Empire Strikes Back in 1981. Your neighborhood being Boston? Yes. I lived in a town outside of Boston called Newton, and we went all around Newton, dressed up as Darth Vader and Yoda, <laughs> telling everyone about the upcoming The Empire Strikes Back. Aww. Even though Fox put millions of dollars into their advertising, I figured, what's what's a little more? Couldn't couldn't hurt. Me with my Don Post helmet and my cardboard cutout chest piece and my long satin cape, and Danny with the Don Post Yoda mask and a burlap robe, which he, he kind of looked like Maggie Simpson. Every third step, he would just fall down. It was just Aww. so long on him. You were both about 10 years old? Uh, no, I, w I was 12, which would make him around 9 years old. Oh, okay. And we would try to tell people about The Empire Strikes Back, but it sounded more like this. <laughs> and they would say, what? I would say, <laughs> isn't that mask? You, you, you can't really hear much of anything. But that doesn't matter, because you're promoting The Empire. It was cosplaying with a purpose. So what kind of Star Wars collection do you have? I, I've got a pretty large collection, and it's housed right behind my carbonite Han Solo door in my Star Wars room. Whereas most people collect action figures, or they'll collect the premium format figures. They'll collect a certain set of something. With me, it's just whatever strikes my fancy. I don't really have a complete collection of most things. I just get whatever I really like, like the jumbo gentle giant figures. I, I really like those. Those when, are pretty neat. When it comes to nostalgia, that's just my soft spot. And seeing those big figures, I just love them. So that's that. I would say that's the one thing I'm really obsessed about collecting each and every one of them. But now they're coming out a little too quickly, and th those are huge. Yeah. Those are huge and pretty much takes up a lot of room in the Star Wars room. <laughs> that's very true. 
It's kind of like the expanding universe novels. Like I could keep up with them, and then yeah. all of a sudden there's this one point, explosion. It gets to be a little too much. Yeah. And at some point, I'll catch up. Yeah. Another thing that I really like is that they're now starting to put out functional Star Wars collectibles. Yes. Like the the ceremonial Luke Skywalker jacket. I love that, which I got last year for Christmas. Thank you, sweetie. You're welcome. I love that. I love the Star Wars umbrella. I love the the Wookiee uh, side bag that they put out. Think Geek has a lot of useful things. Yeah, good lightsaber candlestick, and and even William Sonoma comes up with a ton of st- useful Star Wars cookie, cookie cutters, cutters, pancake molds, mm-hmm. and things that you can actually use. In our kitchen, we've got a Star Wars apron. We have R two D two spatulas. If I'm gonna collect something, it's gonna be something functional. Whereas before, I was taking the Tony Stark approach of the want it, buy it, store it. Then no. you don't get to enjoy it. No, you don't. No, you don't. So how have you expressed your fandom? Oh, I express my fandom in, in lots of ways. Either going to the celebration conventions is one way of, of expressing fandom. You go, you go and cosplay. You go and meet people from other parts of the world, and you talk to them about how they perceive collecting, how they perceive convention going in the in the whole fandom community, which is a whole new life upon itself. It's not, whereas before everyone was just interested in the movies, but now. People are getting together because of their fandoms, and there are some fans who don't even haven't really seen all the movies. They really love the fandom community. They they love the video games. They love the, some of the expanded novels. I've got a friend who hasn't really seen all the movies, but she's a huge fan because she's a huge fan of the video games. That's right. She's just a gamer. Yeah. So I I go to conventions. I like to cosplay. When I cosplay, it's it's something more tongue in cheek. Like Sarah will go as Slave Leia. And I will go as Jabba the Hutt. <laughs> I got the big Ruby's costume. I, I made the mouth so I can puppeteer it along with uh, the Jabba dialogue track, which I have pumped out of a PA system. So as you're hearing the Jabba his dialogue track, I can move the mouth, which makes it look like he's talking. And then I put a little pink tongue coming out of the side of his mouth. So it's fun. It's tongue-in-cheek. Also, last year, Sarah and I made a, a fan film called TPZ. TPZ is... TMZ in the Star Wars universe. That's another huge way of expressing fandom because you get to really become one in the Star Wars universe. Almost like you're a part of that universe because you're making a film that ties in those characters. And for me, that was a lot of fun. Yeah, I think that's your biggest way of expressing fandom is taking what you know how to do and applying your Star Wars fandom to it. Yeah, and I've been a filmmaker. I've been to film school. I've produced TV shows, and now this was the next logical step. The impetus for doing this was because a friend of mine won a Star Wars fan film award, and I couldn't, I couldn't have it where he had an R2 and 3PO statue, and I didn't. But oh, in no. the end, I think I would have done one anyway, because they're just, they're just so much fun. So if you haven't seen it, you can go to YouTube and search TPZ Star Wars fan film. It'll pop right up. Yeah. So, Richard, do you call yourself a geek or no, a nerd? No, 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 I don't. And when I was growing up, it wasn't a good thing to be called a geek or a nerd. A derogatory term? It was term. a very derogatory term. It was a put-down, whereas today, geek and nerd, you can, you can take honor in. But back then, if someone called you a geek or a nerd, they were meaning to put you down. Now people strive to be geeks and nerds and dorks. But you still don't like to call yourself that because that no, stigma. No, I come, I come from the old school gotcha. where that if I still hear geeks and nerds, I still think of the bullies calling everyone who was into Star Trek, Star Wars, anything having to do with sci-fi, fantasy, geeks and nerds. So I've just got that ingrained in my mind. So when I hear that, it's just it's not a good thing. I like to call myself a, a fan instead of geeks and nerds. When I was working in the special effects industry, the term for obsessive fan was a squid. <laughs> a squid? A squid. If you were a squid on something, then that means that you were a big fan. And instead of calling you a geek or a nerd, you were a squid. I'm, I was a Star Wars squid. There you go. Yeah. You know what? I never really asked where that came from. <laughs> How has fandom affected your life? I met you because of Star Wars. Yes, you did. One Halloween, I went to a, a dance party, and I was Anakin Skywalker, and this pretty little blonde girl came over to me, wearing this pirate wench outfit, and she said to me, Can I dance with the Jedi? And I thought, oh my goodness, what an opening line. (laughs) And then three years after that, this little pretty pirate wench girl 
and I were married. Aww. That's all it took was for her to, she used the opening line of, can I dance with a Jedi? <laughs> that was a pretty good opening line. Yeah, it was a great opening line. It worked. You got me. <laughs> and the pirate wench outfit, I'm sure, helped. Yes, yes, it did. <laughs> well, I'm glad I said that. I am too. Now that we've gotten to know me a little bit, let's get to know you, Sarah. All right. You are now in the hot seat. Uh oh. Hot. All right. Sarah, when did you start off being a Disney Star Wars fangirl? Well, I was born in 81. So, <laughs> <laughs> so when The Little Mermaid came out in 89, I was at the exact right age to just soak that up. So when Disney came out with Little Mermaid and then Beauty and the Beast and then Lion King. Right. That's, that's, that's when you became a fan. But when did you start becoming a fangirl? Oh, a fangirl. Well, actually, I would date my fangirlness more to Star Wars. I was too young to see any of the movies in the theater. When my cousins came over the summer of 91, we were looking through our library of VHS movies. VHS. <laughs> <laughs> and they were like, oh, Return of the Jedi, let's watch that. And I had no idea what that was, but they were older than me, so, <laughs> so I said, okay. And we watched it, and... As I was watching it, I had these vague memories of Ewoks. When the Ewoks came on, I had these vague memories that I had seen this before. And when the Wookiee, when everyone got trapped in that net in, on Endor, I, I just, I kept on thinking, I've seen this before. And I think what I was remembering was at about three years old, I had seen these, I had seen at least Return of the Jedi, and it just stirred something in me. So then immediately the next day... So the Ewoks were your gateway into the Star Wars universe. Yes, they were. Nice. Nice. <laughs> All right, go on. The Ewoks were. And so the next day, my cousin said, oh, there's more movies. I was like, what, what are these movies? And they showed me Empire Strikes Back. And I was hooked. The love story, that got me. I, between Han and Leia, it, I was a little girl at 10 years old. Yeah, love stories were my thing. She recites the Han and Leia love scene from Empire every day. <laughs> every day. She gets, all, she gets all blushy. It's true. I'm <laughs> blushing right now. Anyway, so then the next hour, I think after we finished that... So you, you were a fangirl of Star Wars before Disney. I would consider, yeah, the fangirl term applies more to Star Wars for me. Okay. I don't know why. <laughs> I've made active steps toward being a fangirl. In terms of cosplaying, right. in terms of um, making movies, you know, I've done more for Star Wars. I think people assume that you're a big Star Wars fan because of me. Yeah, which is really funny. Because it's it's always assumed that if a girl is interested in Star Wars, it's probably because the husband or boyfriend got them interested. But no, no. On our first date, in fact, what did we talk about? John Williams. I asked her because she was a, a USC grad. And you majored in? Music. And I said, music, huh? All right. I need a topic of discussion for our first date. Oh, who, what, what, who's, your favorite, who's your favorite film composer? John Williams. <gasps> bar none. John Williams. Okay, there's an end. And what's your favorite soundtrack by John Williams, I asked? Star Wars, oh. A New Hope. <laughs> and right then I knew, okay, I got to put a ring on that finger. <laughs> and he did. But not that day. Yeah, she even had a, a Star Wars collection. Yeah, a little collection. Although, I did open my action figures. <sighs> I know, but I wanted to pose them in cute scenes. I know. <laughs> I know, but when, when we went back to Texas, where you're from, we went through a lot of your childhood stuff, and you had some Star Wars stuff I didn't even have. They've become a part of our collection. Yes, they're, they're now sitting in the, in the Star Wars room. <laughs> so I thought, okay, she's, she's, she's an official Star Wars fangirl. How have you expressed your fangirl-ness? -ness? When you say fangirl, I really think about my cosplaying. Cosplaying, convention going, is fandom -ness -ness, having to wait in line the night before the movie opening, all those yes. encompass a fangirl. Yes. So uh, how do you express your fangirlness? -ness? Well, I definitely express it through standing in line waiting. I know in 99 for episode one, 
that was the week I graduated from high school. That makes you a fangirl. Go on. That's true. And my friends, my friends and I all waited overnight to buy the tickets. And we we had our Star Wars trivia game. We had our little tents. We ha- and we made friends with all the people next to us. It was like the most exciting time ever. I just loved it. Oh, and then when we went back to Texas, she showed me the same spot. She stood in line for Phantom Menace. Yes, indeed. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and then you've been cosplaying lately. Yes, I started that about three, no, since 2009. I started that. 2009. Yeah. The first cosplay outfit I wanted to try was Slave Leia. Mm-hmm. Because I figured now that I have a protector mm-hmm. husband, I can mm-hmm. I can wear that outfit out. And it also, I think it empowers you because you really have to wear that outfit with confidence in order to pull it off. And and it also makes you exercise. So it's a good motivator. <laughs> that's, a, that's a good point. And then from Slave Leia, what was your next cosplaying costume? Well, since I love Disney and I love Star Wars, I decided to mash up those two worlds into Jedi Tink. I think it all started when I had to create a Twitter handle. And I thought, huh, at Jedi Tink, that's a pretty cool name. And then from there, I got this idea in my head, like, what would Jedi Tink look like? And so I made some drawings and designs. And so for Celebration 6, I set that as my goal to have a Jedi Tink costume. And I'm so super proud of that costume. Yeah, and then you entered the costume contest. We entered the costume contest, and I ended up getting second place Woo-hoo! in my category. Woo-hoo! As well as, and my category was Jedi, as well as my own little special award, which they gave a few of those out as well, Most Sparkly Jedi. <laughs> <laughs> it was very cute. As exciting as it was to win second place and get the special mention award, you also had James Arnold Taylor reading your intro. I was so excited about that. Yeah. It was exciting to hear James Arnold Taylor read the intro as Obi-Wan Kenobi. Yes. And then, how has fandom affected your life? I think fandom has affected my life more since I met you, actually. Because before before I met you, I was kind of a closet Star Wars fan. That's so cute. I know. It was, it was kind of... The friends I was with, they weren't as into it. So, like, I don't think... Before I met you, I hadn't gone to any Star Wars conventions, anything like that. But, but since I met you, of course, Star Wars brought us together. Mm-hmm. And I, you allowed me to kind of express my fandom more and not worry about what other people thought. Right on. So, I, and it's also given me far more confidence in terms of the cosplay, in terms of... Before me, would you have walked out in public as Slave Leia? Oh, definitely. Like 3% clothing? Definitely not. <laughs> <laughs> definitely not. You gave me confidence in that. So thank you. Well, you are so welcome. <laughs> You're so welcome. I think fandom has affected both of us because when we got married, we had a Star Wars slash Disney wedding. And then for our honeymoon, we could have gone anywhere. We could have gone to Bermuda, mm-hmm. could have gone to Hawaii. Hawaii. But where did we go? We went to England. That's right. And when we were crossing over into England, uh, people would say, you left L.A., sunny L.A., to come to rainy old cold England. London, in particular, yeah. in November. In November. <laughs> On our honeymoon, we took a train down to Elstree, and we got into Elstree Studios. Yeah. And then the next day, we went over to Whippendale Woods, where they shot the Naboo scenes from Phantom Menace. So then, from there, we actually decided to go on our honeymoon also to Disneyland Paris, since I'm a big Disney fan. So actually, by... Us merging together, Richard's gotten more into Disney, and I've gotten more into yeah, Star Wars. Yeah. And then since I, I met you, I got my annual pass holder, and That's then right. I was really intrigued by the Disney parks. And when you said, let's go to Disney Paris as well for our honeymoon, it's like, ooh, that could be really fun. And it was. Yes. It was such a, a trip hearing all the Disney characters talking in French. Mm-hmm. They do shows half French, half English. Now, Sarah, since you've become a fangirl, you've gotten a Facebook page for Jedi Tank. You've gotten uh, a Twitter account for Jedi Tink. Mm Mm-hmm. And what else do you have going on? I even have a website, JediTink.com. It's my blog. It's just kind of a blog about me if you want to get some healthy recipes, if you want to learn about my latest cosplay. That's where you can go to learn more about me. So thank you, Sarah. It was great having you as a guest on your show. Why, thank you. I enjoyed it. (laughs) 
Now entered the Tiki Cantina. Woohoo! Woo! 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 <laughs> right, I want to say that with me today for this fangirl chat, we have Yvonne Montijo. Hi, everybody. She is an avid Disney goer and also a Starfleet member on Star Trek Next Generation. We also have Monique Har. She is also an annual pass holder and a Star Wars fan and also a Run Disney participant. Yes, hello. And with me on the right over here is Jenna Bryson. Hello. And she is a performer. She's also a writer and creator of the upcoming book, Grace from Outer Space. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> and she's also a singer. And oh, writer. thank you. <laughs> All right, we're going to go this first question on the round table okay. for everyone. We'll start off the way we went introduced. We'll start off with the Vaughn. Okay. Uh, when did you become a fangirl and what was it that made you a fangirl? You know what, I, I think I was a fangirl before there was the term fangirls because um, as a little girl, uh, my, you know, my dad used to draw superheroes on my and my sister's arms, um, not in face paints like you have today, but in permanent marker. <laughs> <laughs> my mom loved that. And we used to watch like all the Batman episodes and like I wanted to be, you know, Batgirl and my mom worked in a toy company and I had boys' toys. I, I had the Evil Knievel action figure and the motorcycle. So I was kind of like doing all that stuff before it was like uh, girls were allowed to do those things. So, um, yeah, and it just, uh, my, uh, it became my work, you know, with doing the kids' parties and being able to dress up and all the different characters. So uh, it, it's, as a little girl, it just started. It was just there. And then Monique, what makes you a fangirl? Um, I think I was born one, actually, because the first movie my mom took me to was Star Wars when it came out. I was a little baby. She took me there. So she was into it and like Star Wars and Star Trek and all that stuff. And that's what I grew up watching was I remember Captain Kirk. Yeah, isn't he a smooth guy? Um, but watching all of the Star Trek and the, whenever Star Wars or movies came out or anything sci-fi, that's what we went to go see. Or like even Superman, because that was my first girl crush, was Christopher Reeve as Superman. So. I believe I can share in that crush with yes. you. Hmm. So yeah, so I just grew up with it. I didn't really think it was anything different. And then I'm from a small town, so it wasn't like it was a big thing. We were all kind of into it and read the comic books and cartoons and all that fun stuff so so it wasn't it wasn't nothing unnormal. like a conscious decision of like yeah. i shall be i think i just grew up with it and i don't think it's anything outside of the norm okay. to be or to enjoy yeah i think now we can just let the geek uh, flag flare up just a little bit more like, <laughs> yeah. exactly now that it's and popular our yeah. dresses and everything <laughs> <laughs> awesome and jenna what makes you a fangirl yeah i mean i have to echo that sentiment as everyone's talking about you know their childhood memories i mean one of my first memories of of watching tv by myself was maybe when i was like four or five on this black and white tv that <laughs> i had in my room and watching the incredible hulk and oh, watching Bruce yeah. Banner just like yeah, yeah. rage and um, being just like fascinated by it. My dad used to, <laughs> I used to quote from Buck Rogers. Do you guys remember <laughs> Buck Rogers? Yeah. And I was, that's another one that I would watch when I was in kindergarten, I remember. And I used to like quote that, neener, neener. like I used to like make the sounds <laughs> and stuff. And, um, and I watched all the old Star Trek episodes on Nick at Night and, then got in heavily into Next Generation. Yeah, and that came too. out because those were my formative girl crush years, and I had a huge <laughs> crush on on Crusher. Uh, <laughs> well, yeah. we oh my gosh, I have stories about that too. You know, he lives that. in LA. I have stories for you. <laughs> he's, he's kind yeah. of skinny, really skinny. Um, That's know, right. Uh, Yvonne met him. Yeah, um, it was really interesting because I've been on many, many sets. And when we're going through fittings, I remember like one of the first fittings, I walked 
through the sound stage and of course they're not shooting so it was just maybe a couple of like you know set guys doing something it was the first set I ever walked on then I got chills mm. like just going to up and down my back and it was like oh my god I'm on the enterprise <laughs> <It's so cool. laughs> I was just like all right let me walk around and I was just like checking out the whole set before I went over to the wardrobe department you know for my fitting to get my official you know uniform yeah I spent a lot of hours on the enterprise (laughs) wow I bet a lot of people are very jealous that's so awesome I know I am (laughs) um yeah I did a lot with uh with Whoopi Goldberg and when I was in my I had like uh, two main outfits I had my red burgundy um officer's uniform and then my civvies so I was either on the bridge with my back towards all the actors <laughs> or you know, just in the bar with some aliens having like right. a good time and, and Whoopi Goldberg being at the bar. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> That's awesome. Speaking of people who watch Star Trek, this is a question just if you want to jump in. A lot of us are called nerds or geeks. Do you think now that's a derogatory term or how do you take that term well, if you're called that? Doesn't it go back to biblical days where it says, and the geeks shall inherit the earth? (laughs) (laughs) Well, we're seeing that happen with technology and... Okay, It's true. uh, Look at Steve Jobs. Yeah. That's true. I I think if geek means being willing to follow your passion regardless of what other people think, then that's like really a good thing and the world needs more, more geeks. Them really do. Right. That's right well on. said. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't think good. it's um, a bad thing anymore. I think it, growing up, yeah, oh, you're a nerd or you're a geek, but then now it's like, well, yeah, I am. What are you going to do about it? I yeah, think it's and actually. Guess what? Become... Let me get out my little geek phone. We outnumber you now. Right. <laughs> well, I, I actually think that it's become, um, it's become like the in thing. Yeah. It's like a badge a of honor. Yeah, it, is. it is. And there are, and now it's like the reverse, whereas like in the past, people might have called a geek or a nerd a poser for like trying to be cool. Right. It's the other way around. You have like these like actual maybe cool kids trying to say like, mm-hmm. oh yeah, I totally watched Doctor Who, you know, and mm-hmm. and, <laughs> and just go, and name the episode where they <laughs> right because now I think we I think the nerds and geeks do outnumber yeah. all of the you know of the people who you know don't watch The Walking Dead or you know yeah. like <clears throat> don't know every you know princess character in the entire <laughs> Disney catalog. Um, <laughs> Yeah, so... They don't burst out into their songs in random right. moments, right? Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> what? The world isn't like Glee? Where everyone bursts into song? Uh, well, my world is, apparently. So. <laughs> Do you think there's a reason why we're only hearing about fangirls now as opposed to, say, 10 years ago? Yeah, it's interesting. Actually, now that I'm thinking about it, it might have something to do with the internet and the yeah. prevalence yeah. of Facebook. And cameras on, yeah. on everyone's phones, you know, so, like, you can take pictures of yourself when you decide to do Catwoman makeup yeah. randomly yeah. on a Sunday morning. <laughs> you, like, take pictures of it and post it to Instagram. That's right. I see your Instagram yeah. posts. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think also it's, it's part of our culture that women, we're doing more now. Um, whether we have more, look at Hillary Clinton, we have more women now in politics. Maybe mm-hmm. she'll be the next president. Um, there are now women in sports are finally beginning to get notice. I really think it has to do with that, um, the goddess energy rising forth and manifesting <laughs> in all its many forms. <laughs> that, you know, women, we're here. You know, where I am woman, hear me roar. And Yeah, I think so too. I think it's um, also maybe kind of we're breaking free of like gender stereotypes yeah. and stuff and what is is okay for women to like or to want to dress like if you know a girl wants to dress up like captain america mm-hmm. absolutely you know there's... she's like i'm gonna make a captain american costume yeah, exactly. that's gonna be yeah. awesome yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. you know so just being able to break through those stereotypes and stuff i think is maybe also why we're seeing yeah. i mean not that a lot of fangirls don't also you know stick to like the feminine stuff but it's fun to branch out once totally. in a while <laughs> yeah well there's that little girl um a while back, she did. A, there was a video of her on YouTube where she's like in a toy store ranting about how come it's only pink stuff mm-hmm. because some <laughs> girls don't like pink. Well, she has another video out on YouTube, and this one she's ranting about 
the Black Widow action figure and how come she can't find it in the toy store. Yeah, there's no costume. If, right, if she's in the movie and how come so that there's this younger generation of girls also that are going, wait, we're here. Where's the stuff yeah. for us? You got the boy toys. Oh, yeah. But where's the yeah. girl action figures oh, and yeah. the girl yeah. costumes? Yeah. yeah, you know I'm all about that. And now this one, we're going to do a little circle around, ask each one in turn. Yvonne, what have you done recently as a fangirl? <laughs> well, I'm, I actually was working on a Thor costume and um, looking forward to the next uh, set of Star Wars movies and trying to figure out how I can get cast even as an extra <laughs> in the next set of Star Wars movies. But I haven't figured it out yet, but that's, that's what I'm, I'm working on. That's awesome. <laughs> uh, when you say a Thor costume, are you working on one for yourself? Uh, just for kids parties like in, you know in general okay in, in general because you know I would be Mara Jade I have to work on my Mara Jade costume because <laughs> that's that's my favorite character out in fandom yeah she is pretty badass <laughs> <laughs> but I don't fit into my Catwoman costume anymore <laughs> oh. Oh. <laughs> well Monique what have you done recently as a fangirl <laughs> a funny one is at work, we had this fun Friday thing, and you were supposed to wear your favorite jersey of your sports team. Yeah, my jersey was Star Wars. So <laughs> on the back, I did the nice. Princess Leia bun hair. I was like, dude, this is what I bring. That's yeah. awesome. I don't do sports. This is it. This is this what is I got. Yeah, this is my sport. Star Wars <laughs> is my sport. So Did you Instagram yeah. that? No, it didn't Instagram that, but I got a lot of people came up to me later and said, oh, yeah, that was really cool. I go, yeah, you know what? Just stick with what you love. I could go out and totally... You know, be opposed and pretend I am in right. sports. I'm not. So I'm going to make it into what I enjoy and what I like awesome. to do. So, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, cool. I wish I could have seen it. I know. Well, you know what? I can do it again all the time. There you go. On the shirt. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Jenna, what about you? Um, I guess the last thing I did was make my Merida costume, which I was really <laughs> proud of. Oh, beautiful. Yeah. I made a Target, too, because I just wanted, like, I'm really big on just, like, having accessories that match the character. And I just thought, wouldn't it be funny if Merida walks around with her Target? <laughs> <laughs> she's so obsessed with archery that she's got to bring it with her everywhere. And she's got to show everyone, oh, that's not how you do it. You've got to close one eye, aim at it, and working on my Scottish accent, of course. Yeah, that's I was, very good. I was super proud of that costume. So, yeah. Awesome. I just did a video where I put the Merida costume on and I learned one of the songs from the movie because I also play guitar. <laughs> So I, right. I performed in character and made a little video and played her song. And she doesn't sing in the movie, but it's fun to, like, just pretend, like, what would she sing if she yeah. sang a song? I think it would probably be this, you know? Every once in a while, I go down to Hollywood Boulevard. Like, rarely, but every <laughs> once in a while, I'm like, I'll try it. Let's see how this goes. Wow. Do you make any money? <laughs> like, $20. And I always go <laughs> with another friend so that, you know, we have protection numbers. So we're splitting <laughs> yeah. it. So then we're making 10 each. And then after the Metro Fair, because we always ride the Metro, which is, you know, $3, I think $3 total. So then we <laughs> cleared 7 bucks each. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it's an interesting experience. It's interesting. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. Anyone can jump in here. And Yvonne already touched on it. What are you looking forward to the most in terms of either a movie, a Ooh. convention, or let's let's go with movies for now. Okay. Definitely um, winning years for the next set of Star Wars movies. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. yeah that yeah. That is like number one. I mean, that's got to be, I think, number one for it anyone isn't yeah. it like star wars <laughs> agreed i think so yeah. i think jj abrams prime directive yes. prime yes. yeah yeah i think he can do no wrong like i no, think jj yeah. abrams can do no wrong and like he's gonna kill it i'm so excited yeah. and the fact that they're using john williams yeah for yes. music yeah. thank you just, like slam dunks the whole thing mm-hmm, yeah. mm-hmm. I'm looking forward to Frozen, even though yeah. the, the main character looks exactly like Rapunzel, except that she <laughs> totally brain. does. Like the whole movie, actually. The whole movie, very much the style. Very stylistic yeah. of Rapunzel. Yeah. But I loved that movie and the style, so. I did, and I heard that this is going to be like in that vein where there's like still some music, you know, there's like some singing and stuff, but it's not like, you know, a whole crazy amount. It's just like enough to give, you know, those of us who love the musical mm-hmm. Disney, 
you know, make us feel satisfied, but not so much to turn off the little boys because <laughs> they think little boys hate music and yeah. singing. <laughs> Maybe they turn it into a rap and then it'll be okay. Yeah. Maybe that's, right. what, they need to do. that's what they need. Boys like rap, right? Right. <laughs> Anything you're looking forward to, Monique? The makeup, I think when I go, that's what I look at is the makeup on the movies. For and, movies? Like, yeah. are you talking particularly, like, superhero movies or? Any movie. Um, that's what I kind okay. of get drawn into. But, yeah, like, the superhero movies or the Star Wars movies. I just kind of go, ooh, that looks cool. How do they do that? How do we recreate that? CGI. Yeah. How do we, no. <laughs> without CGI. <laughs> yeah. How do we do this? So, yeah, that's what I look forward to the most in the costuming and all the fun stuff. Nice. Nice. Well, speaking of movies and actors... Let's talk Thor. <laughs> talk what? <laughs> oh, we're just talking about our nails, sweetie. Oh, okay. But uh, absolutely, Thor, I mean, please, dear Lord. Yeah. <laughs> thunder. Yeah, 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 yeah. Come raise my thunder, why don't you? Yeah. <laughs> Woo! <Wait. laughs> oh, my God. He's a, yeah, he's a hottie, all right. Yeah, with that. Big hammer of his, yep. <laughs> <laughs> I think the outfit really helps that whole thing, too. Well, and also because he's like a god, and uh, it's like, you know, the cape. It kind of, it's like taking the old Greek idea of the gods and modernizing it. So mm. it, it sort of kind of yeah, fits. It's, true. it's interesting. Yeah. Like, the, the cape, it makes sense. Yes. that he would have one, you know. Right, because that was what they wore back then. Yeah, yeah mm -hmm. exactly. Yeah. If you, know. you were, you know. A god. A god. A fashionable or, god. Or regal or yeah. what have you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Actually, I have some news. I don't know if all of you have heard, mm -hmm. but there was an open casting call at Disneyland for a Thor lookalikes. Wow. So guess what? We're going to have Thor to take pictures with at Disneyland sometime soon, and oh, I nice. believe it's November. <laughs> Ooh, okay, I'll be there. That's cool. I That'll be cool to up. finally see um, yeah. superheroes yeah. at the park. I wonder, like, I'm, so, I'm, I'm guessing they would probably put him in California Adventure, if I had to take, like, a wild guess, or did they say? I think Thor movies? would be probably available for, for taking pictures at Disneyland um, near when the movie comes out, which yeah. is November yeah, 8th. Yeah, that makes Definitely. sense. Yeah. yeah. That makes sense. So, so we're going to have a lot of lines of, uh, uh, the line will be so filled with little boys and that older line? women, I was going to yeah. say. Yeah. And their moms, <laughs> their moms, <laughs> don't you want to go meet Thor, right? Yeah, right, yeah, right, 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 <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah little, little boys Mom, the line is over women. an hour, it's okay. It's all right, you know what, we'll wait it's for it. One, it's good. Right. You, know you go what? play in the water, the yeah. water thing right there by Pizza Planet. Yeah, we're good. Yeah, yeah, you're right, that'll be very interesting to see who gets in line to, uh, Take pictures with Thor. <laughs> this will be won't this will be the first time they've had a superhero in the park too. I feel like this is the first time since they've acquired. Mm -hmm. um, uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, at the D twenty three convention, they did have Captain America, mm -hmm. uh, but but yeah, he hasn't been in the parks. Yeah, I'm excited. That's really cool because you know before that it was just all strictly, you know, the cartoon characters mm -hmm. from Disney and stuff, and so it'll be cool to have some variety. Don't just stand in line for the princess. We can stand in line for Thor now. And then get right. Captain America out there. Just saying. Right. Yeah. Just saying. saying. That'll yeah, be fun. Just saying. That's next yeah. one. We well, do I hope now. they get the casting right. Sometimes you're like, oh, he doesn't look anything like Yeah, that that's character. true. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> All right, ladies. Well, thank you for joining us today at Skywalking Through Neverland. And cheers. 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 <laughs> Thanks for having us. Yeah. Star Wars is everywhere. My name is O.C. 3 po Kellogg's C. 3 po Oh, no! Death Vader! Who? I'm a teenager from outer space. So now we're going to roll into our vintage video segment. This is where we get to share with you guys all the video clips that I've been gathering for the last 35 years. These are Star Wars clips from Kenner commercials, their appearances from the Star Wars casts on talk shows. Today's segment is Star Wars and Vintage Pop Culture. 
What does that mean? These are references made in TV shows from the 80s and 90s that had a, a Star Wars reference. I know today you hear a lot of references in The Office and 30 Rock. Well, these references are from Late Night with David Letterman, Friends, Doug and Bob McKenzie, and New Heart. Step back and enjoy. Roll it. Top 10 bad things about having a summer uh, share with uh, time share with Darth Vader. Here we go, number 10. Claims those long distance calls to the Death Star aren't his. Uh, number nine, uses Jedi powers to shake up your beer just before you open it. Number eight, he's always accusing you of hiding his asthma inhaler. Number seven, claims he paid you the rent a long, long time ago. And number six, dances around in nothing but cape and cowboy hat while doing Darth Brooks routine. Number five, for once he could use force to lift his wet towel off the couch. Number four, that scary music that plays when he enters a room gets old real fast. Uh, you feel like an idiot saying, no, Darth isn't here. He's on the ice planet Hoth. <laughs> remember, remember Bonanza, the, the little Joe and yeah. Hop Singh and Hoth and Hop Singh. Adam? Yeah, yeah right. Uh, number two, not easy cleaning burnt Ewok fur off the barbecue grill. And the number one bad thing about having a summertime share with Darth Vader constantly doing his lame James Earl Jones impression. There he is. Well, honey, what about you? I what? Mean, any fun, you know, fantasy type things? No. Come on, you gotta have one. Nope. Ross, you know what? What? If you tell me, I might do it. <laughs> <clears throat> okay. Um. Did you ever see um, Return of the Jedi? Yeah. Do you remember the scene with um, Jabba the Hutt? Well, Jabba had as, as his prisoner um, Princess Leia. Princess Leia was wearing this um, gold bikini thing. It was pretty cool. Yeah, oh, Princess Leia in the gold bikini. Oh, every guy our age loved that. Really? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's huge. Yeah, that's the moment when, when you know, she stopped being a princess and she became like, you know, a woman. You know. <laughs> Did you ever do the, the Leia thing? Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <Ooh. laughs> really? That, that great, huh? No, it's just that I got this new pager, and I have it on vibrate. <laughs> great. Look. <No>. Ooh, hi. <laughs> uh -huh. oh, where is my strong Ross Skywalker to come rescue me? <laughs> Okay, here we go. I am Jabba's prisoner, and you have a really weird look on your face. What, what is it? Did I get it wrong? Did I get the hair wrong? What, did you just picture it differently? What? What? No, no, no it's, um, it's not you. It's, um, it's... Well, what is it? Come on, sweetie, you're kind of like freaking me out here. I hate Chandler. The bastard ruined my life. Okay, we're astronauts, eh? Astronauts? Yeah. Good day, Houston. This is Apollo. We're on the moon having our hair done over. Uh, good day, Apollo. This is Houston. We have you on visual scope, eh? And like, oh, aliens, arm poked on torpedoes. Okay, get ready for arm. lunar war. Arm Here, phasers. Arm. Here comes Darth Vader using Grecian formula. Over. Fire one. And fire two, eh? Okay, we're gonna go out and get some uh, after our hair. We're being invaded Take by off. crabs. Take off. Oh, Take off. Houston, my space hero, Big Puncher. Yes, 
Take off. You're, You're wrecking my hair. Come on. Take off. in the force. Dick just fell down the stairs. Oh, Watch what she's doing. I think his ankle is broken. Oh, I'll call the doctor. What the hell did I trip over? It's my toolbox. If you have a vintage video you want to share, please go ahead and share it with us. If it's something that's rare, so much the better. If it's something that you want to add a fun commentary to, please, by all means. We're going to end today's podcast with a segment we like to call what has happened this coming week in Star Wars and Disney history? Ooh, tell me, tell me. Now, Sarah, if I were to ask you, when did Boba Fett first make his appearance, what would you say? I think I would say the holiday special. <sighs> so close, but so wrong. On September 24th, 1978, Boba Fett made his first appearance, a live appearance, walking alongside Darth Vader at the San Anselmo Country Fair Parade. San Anselmo? Where, where's that? That's up by Skywalker Ranch. Oh. In fact, that's where the park just opened, dedicated to George Lucas, where they have the, the bronze Yoda in Indiana Jones. And then we were lucky enough to make a, a small donation where our names are now associated with that, with the park in San Anselmo that's dedicated to George Lucas. Oh, wow. All right, what's happened in Disney history? Well, on, on that same date, September 24th, but this time in 1992, the very first official Disneyana convention takes place at Disney's Contemporary Resort in Walt Disney World. Is it like Disney Expo? Uh, it's a bit like it was the very first Disney Expo, as you, if you want to call it that. Kind of like the way Star Wars had its first celebration before it was celebration. Yeah, only this is more about Disneyana, so it's more about all the merchandise and stuff. And it marks the first time... Wait a minute, Disney merchandise, I, I don't get it. <laughs> Well, anyway, that, that marked the first time that the Disney Company sponsors an official convention. And then on September 25th, guess what Jedi turns 62 years old? Hmm. Oh, come on. I know. Come on. Well, I would say Mark Hamill. It is. Happy birthday to Mark Hamill, who turns 62 years old on September 25th. He's only going to be a few years younger than when Alec Guinness played Obi-Wan. Boy, that puts things into perspective. That really does. And then on September 26th, 2002, now get this, the words Jedi, Dark Side, the Force, are now entries in Shorter Oxford Dictionary. Wait, what? The Sh Shorter Oxford Dictionary? Yeah, there's the Oxford Dictionary, which is like the size, which is the size of a car. Okay. And you have the Shorter Oxford Dictionary, which is more like the supplemental. Oh, it's short. It's shorter. Yeah, it's a, it's the... These are the words we didn't get into the last edition, so we're going to give you the supplemental edition. Instead of supplemental, they use the word shorter. Okay. But anyway, these words are now in the dictionary. How awesome is that? That is so cool. Yeah, they've all met the prerequisite of achieving a certain level of usage. Also included in this edition are words like Klingon, TARDIS, and Mind Meld. Okay, Klingon, what's that from? Star Trek. TARDIS? Uh, Doctor Who. And Mind Meld. Star Trek, of course. Nope, President Obama. Moving oh. right along. <laughs> so guess who was born on October 1st, 1928? That might give you a hint. Uh, uh, 1928? That's, that's a few years before my time. Yes. Uh, it's not Walt. Nope, he was uh, 1901. Give me a hint. M-I-C... Mm, not getting it. K-E-Y... Need more. M-O-U-S-E... <sighs> so you're not going to give any more of a hint than that, are you? Nope. All right, I don't know. <laughs> wait a minute. Is it Mickey Mouse? It is. Now, some of you are going, wait, wait, Mickey Mouse's birthday is November 28th. But actually, Walt claimed that October 1st was the date that Mickey Mouse was born. But the Walt Disney Company officially claims that November 28th, 1928 is his birthday. Because that is when Steamboat Willie was released. Okay, who's got more of an official say? The man who created Mickey Mouse or the company that finances Mickey Mouse? I would oh, say Walt Disney, that's but... That's a tough one. Yeah. Yeah, Disney. But you know what? Who has more marketing power? The uh, Walt Disney Company. Today, I would say the Walt Disney yes, Company. Yes, yes. Guess which live person was also born on October 1st? Donald Duck. Live person. Goofy. I'll give you a hint. She's one of my favorite actresses Minnie ever. Mouse. Minnie Mouse. No, live person. Oh, give me a year. Real person. Oh, 
1935. 1935. Hannah Montana. <laughs> you are incorrect. Well, give me a hint. Give, give, the, give all the listeners a hint. All the listeners a hint. Let's see. Supercala. Supercala. Supercalifragilisticexpialidocious. Julie Andrews. Julie Andrews, who we just saw in concert with John Williams. Yes, we did. When we had our meeting with J.J. Abrams. Move along. <laughs> also on October 1st, 1977. Now, there's two variations of the Star Wars theme. There's the all-popular John Williams. But for those of us who were around when Star Wars first came out, we also associate Miko's Star Wars and other galactic funk as an official Star Wars anthem, because that's all you heard back in October of 1977. I'm not sure what the other galactic funk was, but we never really got past the Star Wars theme. <laughs> and oddly enough, October 1st, 1977, is when this album went to number one on Billboard, and it stayed number one for two weeks. That's unprecedented. Unprecedented for a knockoff. And he never got the rights from John Williams or George Lucas. Really? Yeah. Yeah, and in fact, Lucas liked it so much that he said when you do The Empire Strikes Back, you do have all access to sound effects and voices and whatever you need. Oh my goodness. I know. Did he uh, did he do The Empire Strikes Back? Yeah. He did? Okay. It, it's, it wasn't as well known as Star Wars and other galactic funk. Oh, okay. And in 1983, Miko also did the Ewok Celebration song, which was more of a rap. Wow. <laughs> I'd like to hear that. Yeah. I... That's the one song I cannot find on iTunes or anywhere. Oh. So if anyone has it out there, please, please send it in. Oh, we'd love to hear that. And we have another birthday on October 3rd, 1924. Let me give you a little audio hint. <laughs> Silly Jedi! Silly Jedi! Who did the voice of Jabba and Greedo? Larry Ward. Larry Ward is right. Happy birthday to Larry Ward. Now, on October 4th, 2013, Star Wars Episode 3, Revenge of the Sith in 3D, is going to uh, be released in Richard? the... Richard? In the... What? That was canceled? Oh, yeah. Never mind. Yeah. On a happier note, October 6th is called Mad Hatter Day. Do you know why? Oh. Uh... That's the day everyone's going to wear a hat. No, it's not even his birthday. But have you looked at his hat lately? Yeah. Oh, there's the 10 and the 6. Indeed. October 6th, oh. Mad Hatter Day. Happy Mad Hatter Day to everybody. And finally, on October 8th, 2003, the Golden Horseshoe Variety Show performs its final show after more than 4,000 performances. I'm so happy that we got a chance to see some of those, some of those shows. Me too. It will be missed. That wraps up our first episode of Skywalking, Skywalking Through, Through Neverland. Neverland. But we can't let you go until we give you your homework. 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 We want to hear about your Star Wars or Disney Halloween stories. If you have any stories, if you have any clips of vintage videos, well, we want to see them. If you have Halloween stories surrounding Star Wars or Disney, if you have a, a pumpkin carving, a cool costume, something that happened just last Halloween or several Halloweens ago. Maybe even when you were a kid. Let us know. We want to share on our next episode. Now we are just starting out and getting used to podcasting, so the next episode of Skywalking Through Neverland will be in two weeks. Then, once we get it together, our goal is to do a show once a week, because there's just so much happening in the world of fandom. Now you can follow me on Twitter at Jedi Tink. You can also view Richard's blog at .5passlightspeed.com. That is the word spelled out, point, the number five, pastlightspeed.com. And please help us bring Star Wars Weekends to Disneyland. This is a campaign that we started on Facebook to let the people at Disney know that we want Star Wars Weekends at Disneyland, not just at Disney World. Please like us at facebook.com slash bring Star Wars Weekends to Disneyland. And remember, never land on Alderaan. <laughs> Thank you for listening to Skywalking Through Neverland. We would love to hear what you thought of the show. Please send feedback and suggestions. You can email us at share at skywalkingthroughneverland.com. Please visit us at our website, skywalkingthroughneverland.com, 
Find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash skywalking through Neverland and on Twitter at skywalking pod. All materials submitted become the property of Skywalking Through Neverland and are subject for use on our show. You can help support Skywalking Through Neverland by posting about us on Facebook, Twitter, or just tell another fanboy or girl. We would also really appreciate a five-star review on iTunes. A link to our iTunes page can be found on skywalkingthroughneverland.com. Skywalking Through Neverland was created and produced by Richard and Sarah Woloski. Segment producers are David Scale, Richard Woloski, Sarah Woloski, Graphic design and website design by Sarah Woloski. Technical advisor, Peter Heitman. Skywalking Through Neverland is not affiliated with Lucasfilm Limited, Disneyland Resorts, or the Walt Disney Company. All names, sounds, and related items of Star Wars and Disney are registered trademark and copyright Lucasfilm LTD and the Walt Disney Company and their respective trademark and copyright holders. All rights reserved. Skywalking Through Neverland is intended for entertainment and information purposes only. All original content of this podcast is the intellectual property of Hey Hey Entertainment, copyright 2013, all rights reserved. No part of this show may be repurposed, reproduced, redistributed, or rebroadcasted without the written permission of Hey Hey Entertainment. Sorry, all that had to be said. Goodbye. Live long and prosper. Wait, sorry. May the force be with you. And cut. That's a wrap.